down at the farm. Hey, here we are down at the farm. It's a nice peaceful place to uh, to record my video for today, which is uh, why bother trademarking? Why trademark? Well, it's a good question. You know, we get asked that a lot by, uh, by clients. So in a nutshell, a trademark gives you a sword and a shield. <laughs> The sword lets you prevent other people from using your trademark. So you can send them cease and desist, you have the, the rights to use your mark and so on. It's a shield because a trademark registration gives you a presumption of validity, which means that you can defend yourself against other parties asserting, in this case, a sword against you. So saying you're using our brand without authorization, etc. You can use your registered trademark to defend you against that. Now, there's a lot of nuances in it, but that's the nutshell basically of why you'd want to go for a federal trademark registration. Okay, and there are two different types of trademarks. There are registered trademarks, which is what we've been talking about thus far, and there are unregistered trademarks, also called common law trademarks. So basically, when you start to use your brand in the marketplace, you start accruing rights, and those are unregistered trademark. So you, by putting a little TM and superscript beside your mark, you can get common law trademark rights. They're free and they come automatically from use. You just have to keep records of your use. A registered trademark is where you register with the federal government. So the registration, once you receive it, you apply, it takes six to nine months, and then you receive the registration, it gives you a presumption of validity for your mark. So practically speaking, a common law trademark is potentially um, as strong or similarly strong to a registered trademark, as long as it's been used federally and for the length of time and so on. Registered trademark, even though you may have just crossed one or two state boundaries, gives you a presumption of protection for, for the entire uh, US. So that already gives you a leg up. It also, practically speaking, when you're sending cease and desist letters to people who are infringing your trademark, they are a lot more likely to listen to you if you have a registered trademark. So um, it makes sense to do that. And if you have a common law trademark and you've been using it for a little while and you have the rights, you can file for a registered trademark and you can backdate the protection to when you started the use of the common law trademark. So in a nutshell, you're getting a sword to stop others from using your mark and a shield to defend yourself from claims by others that you are infringing with your trademark. So it gives you a presumption of ownership over that mark for those goods and services. Okay, thanks, subscribe. You're gonna have a tip every day for trademark uh, protection for your brand. Remember, 50% of your company's value might be your brand, so it's worth locking it down. <laughs>